In this video, I will cover how to use Camel network links from the Cal OES Firus and Cal Fire Air Intel aircraft. Both of these programs are collecting fire perimeters from crewed aircraft and processing and transmitting the data while airborne. The fire perimeter data is available publicly through an Esri feature service and is used in a variety of mapping programs. For ATAC use, we are republishing this out as a KML and I'll walk through how to import a data package that has the KML network link all set up and ready to stream. First, let's talk through where the KML network links are located. I'll launch ATAC. The KML network links are found in the Overlay Manager. They will be listed as a network resource. However, you won't see a category for network resource until one is added. So notice you don't see one here. If you've watched my video on using NASA firms data as a KML network link, I cover how to manually add them. For this video though, we will be importing a KML network link that has already been created into a data package for ease of sharing. Both the Firus and CALFAR data packages are posted at maps.taxserver.us. Let's go there now. I'm gonna launch Chrome. Type in maps taxserver.us. This opens up the Google Drive page. We're going to go to the data and incident mapping folder, the data folder, then to streaming data, and then air intel. Here we have two data packages posted, one for the Cal Fire Air Intel and one for Firus. We need to download them both. All right, now that we're done here, we can go back to ATAC. Now in ATAC, we're going to use the import tool to bring those data packages in. I'm going to choose local SD, and it's already on my downloads folder. If it's not on your device, click all the way on the left, and get to your download folder. So we're gonna bring in Firus and the Cal Fire Air Intel. Now, when we go back to the Overlay Manager, you can see that we have two network resources in there. I'll click on them, and now we've got Cal Fire Air Intel and Firus. Notice the red X. That means that we have not started streaming yet. So now we're gonna click on this download arrow and hit stream. Notice the green check mark, and now we have this uh, eyeball, meaning that the data is on the map. And if I zoom in, you can see I've got a perimeter here. And if I turn that on and off, they come on and off. Now we'll do the same thing for Firus. One thing I want to cover is how often these are updating. If I click on this pencil here, you can see the address of where it's coming from, and this is auto refreshing every 120 seconds. And it's also leaving the data on the device, meaning if ATAC was to close, you shut your phone off and started it back up, and you didn't have internet access, all this data that's, that has been downloaded will stay there. Okay, so now let's take a little bit deeper look at the data. Both services are just streaming the last 72 hours of perimeters. This is on purpose, so we're not spamming the map with data that's not relevant. Both these programs have been very busy, and you can imagine what the map would look like if we kept every perimeter active. So if you zoom in, you're able to interact with the data and get some of the metadata. I'm going to turn off the CAL FIRE Air Intel. And this is just Firus here. And I'm going to click on one of these perimeters, and so we can get some of the data off it. And at the six o'clock position, get the more info. And you can see that in the description, it shows the acres, and then you can see some other metadata, metadata here when it was collected. 
you can also, if you click on it, get this eyeball in the radial menu. You can turn off one of these perimeters independently. So what that allows you to do is if they've collected a bunch of different data or let's say the last few hours and you've got polygon and polygon um, and you just want the outer polygon, you can turn off the inner polygons. If you want this data back, you can turn it all off and they all come back on. And that's the same for Cal Fire Air Intel as well. They both act, um, they're both exactly the same. The reason I wanted to just show a virus is the metadata does look a little bit different. So now we'll turn off virus and we'll turn on the Cal Fire Air Intel. And we'll go up to this outer boundary here. And you can see it just looks a little bit different, but it shows area and acres and the last collection time. The next thing I'm going to cover is how you can change the color of um, the perimeter. So let's bring up the ops map. So I've got the ops map on and you can see in here that that perimeter isn't as easily seen when it has this lighter background behind it. So what this allows you to do is click on this, get this more info, and then lower left, this little pencil icon allows you to change the color. And if I wanted to change it orange, and I can also affect the line thickness as well, and I can even shade in the polygon if I want. So this can be helpful if you're trying to, you know, see this latest perimeter and you've got a base map under it that, that doesn't make it really easy to see. One thing to remember is that some of these polygons have little spot fires and they're all separate. So if you click on one of these, that doesn't mean it's going to capture all the spot fires. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope it helps you better understand how to work with the camel network links coming from Cal OES Fires Program and Cal Fire Air Intel.